Thank you for that presentation. The last presentation will be held by the Bulgarian representatives of European Architecture Students' Assembly. Please welcome Ayasa. So it's a real pleasure to be here. We would like to thank for everyone for the invitation and everyone who is here to join us today. I told that you're going to start, especially at that first part. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, my name is Theodore, and this is Rusina, and we are representatives of uh, EASA. This is the European Architecture Students' Assembly and we are EASA Bulgaria. As students and young architects, uh, we are firmly convinced that sustainability should start at school. And um, we would like to rather present you how a network like ours can be sustainable than discuss the sustainability of a product that we design. Yes, we are going to start with a short story, um, something that happened before EASA exists. Um, this is the case of the winter schools. So let's go back in time when we did not have internet or any kind of easy communication. I mean, from my perspective, of course. So the date is around June 1980. The city is Edinburgh and imagine a council of architects that were um, gathered by rev revolutionary thoughts. And their manifesto was Schools of architecture cannot produce architects, but life, experience, and communication can. They were really, I suppose they were opposite, um, they were opposition of the school system. And they said that school of, schools of architecture can continually investigate the nature of architecture. So they were stating the position um, that the schools are really important, but they are not really efficient at uh, that time. So they decided that um, concept like students for students is really interesting for them. And they decided to create winter schools that were based on um, different multidisciplinary um, activities that were gathering different uh, students from different schools from England at one point. And the idea was to exchange ideas, build confidence, and they were inviting different mentors and teachers from all kinds of uh, architectural universities in Europe and in America. And it was really nice collaboration where teachers with different backgrounds were coming and they were uh, trying to teach people on the round tables, not like at school with lectures. And the idea was to gather all of them together and for example, this is a picture back then. The winter schools were really provocative at first, but then they started to be something that the system understood. The, uh, the main idea was to gather the students together and to get the ability to design and criticize their own educational system. Basically, that means that um, we, as students, we are the active uh, part of the education, so we have to take our role, to take the step and to start design in order to um, understand more what we do as architecture students. And the next part is some thoughts, which is your part. Okay, so those were not thoughts. Those was a story, and now we're going to continue with some reflection on similar stories. So we're going to start um, with, with a sort of a generalization with the condition of the world we live in, uh, the reference to architecture, activism, and education within it as well. So it's 
um, no wonder that almost any magazine, not only architecture one, um, revolves around the critical condition of the world today. In the past decades, we've witnessed um, environmental disasters, economic crisis, etc., etc. So, in this context, um, it seems that there is a lack of um, common perspective of which direction we all should choose. So, in that environment, it's only natural that um, a trigger of activism is evident. We can um, observe now, just as it was evident in the 60s and 70s, a peak in social movements. That lack of collective perspective triggers civic, um, let's say, a civic response in terms of a social movement. A particular type of social activism is architectural activism. In that sense, Architects can react to the conditions around us that are changing, to things that we disagree with, and have um, instant impact on our environment. The image you see over there is of a structure designed by Shigeru Ban, who um, became prominent with this particular social aspect of his architecture, how he translates innovation, how he combines social and spatial issues um, and thinks of a solution, at least proposes one. In that sense, we as students reflect on the issue of architectural activism in our education. It has been a trend, there has been a trend there of schools or at least that part of academia that lays on the very fringe that is open to urban culture, more open to social issues, um, what we call peripheral education or peripheral education phenomena. There has been that trend that mm, we look more into our societal problems. Um, some of you might have heard of live projects. Those are projects that involve students that deal with real life issues, that deal with real social problems and using students' creativity to respond. Um, this, we think, is a tactical, could be a tactical move for universities and for our education in general to become more open, more engaged with its environment. And this is one of the reasons why we see the potential there. And the potential, Teddy? Yeah. Potential is the thing that motivates us to do things. Um, as you saw, we are followers of uh, activism movement that started around 80s. And going through some theoretical path, <laughs> we, uh, we always go to the motivational path. And for us, motivation means potential. We do believe that um, going out of the core, going to the periphery of the education, uh, is where the potential will be released. And in that sense, um, EASA as a movement and as a network is really important. We would also like to stress that um, the, big, the big goal for us here is for academia at its core to see that potential in those peripheral phenomena and take advantage of it, use them as testing grounds for new ideas where the risk is low, but the effect can be immense. And no, nobody is saying that the universities are not needed. No, I mean, uh, for example, EASA is not alternative of the educational system. It's just um, really needed thing, especially for experiments. Yep. Um, this is where we're going to continue with what EASA is, for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's a supplement. It's a contribution to the education that each and every one of us get. It's an opportunity. In that sense, we treat it as a unicorn because we say that it is unique. Because among many other formats similar to ASA, what makes EASA stand out is not the fact that it's the biggest um, united network of architecture students in Europe. It's not the fact that um, 
Each year it gathers hundreds of people together to think and create. It's the fact that it's an absolutely horizontal network. It's non-hierarchical, non-political, has no relation to a particular um, institution. It's just a network. Uh, for example, one of the motivations of the students in the 80s uh, was that the system was basically ruled by some of the authorities that were really above, and the universities were pyramids where one person was deciding for everyone. And this is not happening at ASA. We are a horizontal network, and basically all the decisions are made by consensus. Which I assume anyone can see is unique because you can imagine having 100, and pe 100 plus people in a debate revolving around a particular social issue or a topic as general as the future of architectural education and that large group having to reach a consensus decision. It, it's, it works. We've been there. We've been part of that decision. The other thing that makes it so, so, so particularly interesting. Yeah, is what we mentioned in the beginning, students for students. The feeling that your colleagues, your friends are doing this, not because of um, money or uh, getting famous or something like that, just because they want to do it because of you and because of your education. ASA usually consists of um, 30 to 40 workshops that are um, usually tutored by other students from all of uh, the European countries. And this is unique experience where you um, have the feeling of being teached by your friends. As we said, EAS is a network, but in order to, for that network to propel and develop, uh, we have annual gatherings, two meetings per year. And each year they happen in a different place, organized by a different team, organized by volunteers. Students design a habitat where students live for two weeks. Students curate a program of lectures and so on um, in which uh, their peers can participate. It's a challenge for sure, but um, we believe that it's a, it's a nice twist of the apprenticeship model from back then. And as we said, we're an active student network and the activity lies in the fact that ever since the 80s... 80, 1981, actually, that was the first EASA ever, where um, students from England decided, inspired by those winter schools that we mentioned, inspired by those, they decided to invite students from all over Europe into Liverpool, and based on that workshop system and tutors from other countries, they involved people being active and they curated a program where they were trying to solve spatial and theoretical problems in between the universities and the cities. Today we're talking about sustainability. This was a topic of EASA, of a whole assembly in... Um, I can't remember, but it was around the 90s. <laughs> Let's say it's somewhere in the 90s. And uh, among other topics that were focused on, I looked at Teddy because he's been digging in the EASA archive for ages now. Um, among other topics, uh, EASA as a network and as um, events in the network have been dealing with topics such as heritage, um, men-nature relationship, um, civic engagement for sure, social architecture. Yeah, even... Um in 2005, for example, the assembly was in Sweden, no, in Switzerland, mm. and the theme was trans, transmission, transaction, and it's again connected with the logistics of Europe. In ne next year, the theme will be tourist, with a uh, question mark. Uh, this year, we are uh, dealing with the theme of free, which is uh, rethinking, recycling, or everything connected with that prefix, re. The idea is, um, just to let you know that just as studios and conferences like this one have a topic and engage people um, to focus and talk and to contemplate and converse, so does this one, even though it looks a bit different. Um, and as we said, 
active student network. So this is the real dream. This is why we are here and we would like to share with you what we're trying to do here on the local level in Bulgaria. Yeah, now the logical part stops and the emotional one starts. Yeah, our dream is uh, to make EASA Bulgaria as a functional core of a network. And mm, if you can imagine that this is the network of the European students of architecture, we are just one knot, one agent from the network. And we as EASA, uh, we wanted to give here, I mean, to take the spirit from EASA and to bring it here in Bulgaria. And our dream was to create a network of mm. students of architecture in Bulgaria. We're only two of many, many more in Bulgaria. Um, right over there are our fellow, um, I don't know, what do we call us? What do Organizers. we call ourselves? Organizers. Oh, that sounds so boring. You said it was going to be the emotional part. <laughs> So what we're trying to do here with those three guys and um, a group of 30 more, at least, we're trying to bring together the, architect, the elite of the architecture students in Europe, the backbone of the network, uh, which consists of two representatives per country from 100 universities from all over Europe. So we were granted um, with the opportunity. <laughs> the opportunity, yeah, thank you. Uh, to host a major event called INCM. This is the meeting of national contacts of the European Architecture Student Assembly. Yeah, dealing with the great name INCM, <laughs> which basically means Intermediate National Contacts Meeting. This is um, the second largest event in the, in the network of the students uh, of Europe. And uh, it's going to be in October here in Bulgaria and in one really special part of Sofia. Um, a, year, a year back um, in history, the organization of European architecture, students in architecture um, granted us that um, opportunity to host the event through a consensus decision. Uh, and they were very eager to do so because of the theme and location we proposed for the event. Uh, this is the main um, slide of the presentation here. If you were listening, uh, you, you're going to actually see the whole, uh, the whole idea, all the levels. When we start from activism, being together, architectural issues, themes, and spatial and uh, educational issues. Um, this is actually our way to say all of those things. This is our project. Um, in 2018, and the place that we are focusing our um, uh, energy is the mountain above Sofia Vitusha. You might have seen it, it's over there. Yeah, usually people don't see it, as we do. <laughs> and the theme that we are exploring is, can you say it because, you know, I always have problems with saying this word. It's continuity. Yeah, in Bulgarian it's uh, preemstvenost. <laughs> Just to let you know, there is a slight difference. Okay. The idea that we wanted to focus on this is that we sometimes sense as architecture students in our community, in our architectural culture here, in our educational culture here, and this is a criticism towards ourselves and all our peers, that sometimes we lack the continuity. So we're looking for it with this event. Yeah, when, when we decided to organize uh, this meeting in Bulgaria, uh, we didn't knew that we are going to actually organize a whole project. And when we started to explore EASA, not only as an event that happens once in a year, uh, but as a theory and uh, thing that it's really precious for the education, we decided to create a project for uh, this uh, um, network of Bulgarian students and we decided not to deal with that issue, organizing an event for uh, 200 people, just five of us, our team. We decided to involve all of the students of architecture that would like to join us in creating this uh, event and exploring the mountain and the topic that we set. And this is the part that basically concerns um, the audience here. Because the event we're organizing is focused on representatives from architecture schools in Europe 
and the idea is to bring them here so that they can communicate with our colleagues. But why the project is important and why we're very glad to present in our own university this project is that it concerns all of us. It concerns different levels, different aspects, and we're looking for continuity not only between students, not only between students and professionals, not only between students and our tutors and academia and etc. We are looking for a way to put students in a central position in a network and even make them moderators, make them active part of a civic society. We would like to um, take the chance of course. to design in order to criticize our educational system and our system. Mm. Of course, we couldn't have done any of this alone. Um, a project like that needs a lot of support. And in order for a network like that or for a student organization to work as a mediator in society, which is the goal, as I mentioned, um, we needed to contact people to support us and to, to mediate the process with, within that group as well. But the greatest idea was that we were not going to use them as just sponsors, but we are going to use them as partners of this uh, sustainable network that we try to create. So this is there as a huge thank you to everyone who believed in that project. And the biggest thank you goes to the other 30, 40 students from Bulgaria, from all the universities in Bulgaria who are already believing it. And we hope we find some new here today. Yes. Over uh, 50 people, students from all of the universities are actually working with, this, with us. And this is not just a hypothetical project, <laughs> it's real. If you're interested, we can share more about the project itself. Thank you. Thank you, Rosina, and thank you all for being here. Thank you.